All right, hey guys, today I'm gonna to be showing you a video of how to flash the chip so you can like unbrick it or uh, update it or whatever you need to do or just factory reset it. So all right, I was intending to make this a Windows video, but unfortunately after about eight hours of trying and looking up information on forums, I was actually unable to get it to fully flash on, win on Windows. So we're just gonna be using Linux today. If you don't have Linux installed, feel free to just borrow a computer that has Linux on it, get a live CD and use an old laptop or just install it to a flash drive. There's a million ways you can get it. So there's really no excuse. Um, I understand that's an extra step, but until we I figure out how to get this working on Windows, this is what we're going to have to do. All right. Okay, so this is what your chip should look like. I, I'm ha sorry about the bad webcam, but I have to use this webcam because it's the only one that has manual focus. All right, so if you look at this board, what you have to do in order to put it in flashing mode is you have to make a jumper. They suggest using a jumper wire, but I don't actually have any spare wires just laying around right now, so I'm, what I did was I just stripped a paper clip. As you can see right here, it has some plastic around it, but all I did was just cut it off on both ends, made it about three quarters of an inch on both sides. And what you have to do in order to put it in um, flashing mode is first thing, make sure there's no power plugged in. As you see here, I have video plugged in, but no power. Second thing is you plug in one side to the ground pin, which is right here. At the very, very end, it's labeled ground. I don't know if you guys can see that. But when you're holding it like this, it'll be the one to the farthest right in the bottom row. Let me show you. So look, farthest right, bottom row. And next thing, pin you want to put it in is the one called, that's labeled FEL. So take a look at that. You can't read it, but it is the fourth one over on the bottom yeah fourth one over on the bottom see just tilt it up you can see fourth one over bottom row all right that will put it in flashing mode but before we actually put it in flashing mode we want to make sure our computer can see it all right so once you open up console you just type in ls usb and it'll probably list quite a few devices go ahead and plug in our usb cable just about any good quality cable should work and plug it in with the jumper in. The jumper has to stay in there when you plug it in. There we go. And then the lights will come on. You can't really see them because it is so much light in there. And now when you run this command, which it plug in the computer, you should see an extra uh, thing in there. Oh, it's 1F, okay. So for me, it is 1F, 3A. As you see right here, it doesn't exist in the top part because it wasn't plugged in before. But if you see something new in your list, you don't have to do that. You can just, it's probably going to be showing up anyway, but that's just how you ch double check to make sure it's being seen by your computer. All right. So next thing we want to do is we want to set up a development environment for chip SDK. So let's go ahead and move this out of the way. We don't need to see the chip right now. Also, if you want, you can, you're completely free to move out this pin right now, out of the jumper. Because basically, as long as you pl have this plugged in when it's actually booting up, uh, then you'll boot into flashing mode. When you're in flashing mode, you stay in flashing mode until you turn it on. So feel free to take out the pin right now. Not pin, paperclip. Paperclip right now. All right, so the first thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and set this up. Uh, they want you to run AD, ATP slash get a uh, minus get update first. Uh, you don't have to run that if you've run that recently, but they, it's, it's probably best to do it anyway. But for the sake of time, I'm just going to skip to the next line which is not really the best thing to do, but I'm just gonna do it anyway, because I'm the best. All right, and paste it, and go. It'll ask you if you wanna install a bunch of stuff. Just go ahead and say yes. Oops. All right, and it will go ahead and install them all for you. All right, good. So the next part is we are going to get the repository from GitHub or the source code, sorry, from GitHub. Copy the next line. All this stuff will be provided in the description for you so you don't have to open up the page. Well, I'll provide a link to this page too. All right, so second thing. Ta-da. And third thing is we're gonna move into that folder. All right, now we're in the folder and we're ready. We have all the tools we need. If we click, type in ls right here, we'll be able to see that we actually have the flashing um, software. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to flash the fastest thing, which is the 
the bare bones kit. This is if you're making an integrated um, project that has uh, where you don't need to install any extra packages or whatever. Alright, so I just did a few tests off camera because I had to delete it. I tried testing every single other GUI option out there and none of them wanted to flash, which is extremely disappointing. I couldn't understand if this was still in the alpha phase, like the kernel hacker phase, but this is... They're accepting pre-orders right now, and this is way past, like, initial phases. I was really hoping they would have had something more concrete out by now, but apparently the only option, even with booting in Linux, a full version of Linux when it's supposed to be bootable through a virtual machine, the only thing I was able to actually get to boot was this version. Uh, the only version I was able to actually get to boot was a non-GUI version, which is kind of disappointing because that means if you brick your chip like I kind of did, I soft bricked it, if you can call it that. I basically just locked myself out. Soft locked, I don't even know what you want to call it. But yeah, so just go ahead and type that in and run it, and that's the only option I can get to work at this time. Um, I'm, I was checking the forums, and apparently even one of the people who work on a team said there's a bug in some one of his scripts, and he updated that like 13 hours ago. So... Not a great... Oops, sorry about that. You actually have to run it as root. I said that before, but I guess I did not. I was too busy ranting. So yeah, even all these months after the kernel hackers got their copy, we're still getting problems with just basic flashing. That's why I kind of wish they went with the SD card root or any other way of booting besides built-in flash. Because when you have to flash it, things go wrong and it just makes everything a lot harder. So, also you can't do it natively in Windows right now. Yes, I know there's a virtual Windows thing they made just for that. But I've been looking all over the forums. People are having f trouble flashing on just about everything right now. So hopefully this at least lets you make your chip usable if you bricked yours or you just need to factory reset. Um, I think this version should come with the package manager, so you can probably install the GUI. Let's just go ahead and check. Yeah, um, you can install a GUI. So that's good to know. Um, but it's just kind of frustrating that you can't just take your chip back to where it was when you got it in the first place. But, I digress. I guess we'll just have to deal with this for now. Hopefully, they, I really, really hope they have all these problems fixed before the actual official release. Because, I mean, I think these problems should have been fixed before even the kernel hackers got there. But seeing how the people who backed it on Kickstarter have to go through all this just to get it to flash, and you can only flash one version of all the ones that are documented, and the documentation is not even that good, Kind of worrisome, but I, I, I think they can, I, I, it's possible for them to fix this. I just really think it should have been fixed already. Anyway, that's enough of my mini confused, tired rant. Um, yeah, uh, hopefully, well, as soon as I can get this working on Windows, as soon as I can, guys, I'll promise I'll make you guys a Windows video. Here we go, it's passing all the stuff over. Alright, so if we look at this right now, it just came up. This is the fa fast boot mode. So now what's happening is it's passing the information from our computer to the chip through fast boot and it's flashing it through that. So that's pretty cool. Alright, it looks like it's done. Once you get back to your terminal prompt thing right here. That means you're good to go. Let's go ahead and restart our chip. The first thing we gotta do is take out this pin, otherwise it will boot back into uh, flashing mode again. So go ahead and pull out your jumper cable or your paper clip and just unplug the power. And plug it back in. And let's see if it boots. We got a logo, that's good. Alright, now we're at our terminal screen. Sorry, they don't have an, my video capture card with me, so I can't show it better. Okay, well, I guess I'll have to leave some information in below about how to connect to wireless via um, terminal, because that's going to be like a whole other, like, 20 minutes right there, uh, showing you how to do that. And you have to log in manually and stuff. Um, but yeah, so you're actually flashed in there now. You can see right here, this is how you install uh, your graphical user interface. Is there more than one or just one? Okay, it's just one. 
Alright, so uh, sorry I couldn't show you guys more, but this is the best I can do for now until they actually start fixing their flashing, which is kind of important. I thought that's something they had to be done by now, but again, uh, hopefully they'll have it out by the time it's for sale in June, but it's still a little bit disappointing. Anyway, I guess I'll see you guys in my next video. Uh, if you have any questions, ask me. It's probably better to ask on the forums, but yeah, I guess I'll see you guys later. Bye.